so we all know how to create a project and also to create a package so what we'll do is uh, even then we will go ahead and create everything from the beginning so we will go ahead and create a, a project and then we will go ahead with so we'll go ahead with the app project and in this uh, we'll go ahead with app app and pana and we need to configure this give the password whatever is uh, given to us and i'll be giving this as server name as with my yeah, underscore this one and click on finish so you can give your name whatever name you want you can give but the name that we create in the real time should always okay i think it's too long The server name is too long, so I'll go ahead with the web project again and select this server. Say next. Yeah, you have got this here. So basically, it was not visible at the time. So I got this server. So uh, probably I can delete these uh, projects because uh, there are too many projects that get overlap. So I don't want so many projects on the same server. So we can we can create a individual project for different uh, servers. For example, you have a quality server, development server, production server. For each server, to hit to each server, we can go ahead and uh, create one one particular project. Okay. Once we create a project, once we create a project, so our concept is to create a package. So we'll create a package here. So there was a time when package was not, we, we were not able to create a package here. We had to go to SCAT and do that in the old version. But now here we have ZB underscore uh, P1. Click on finish. Create request, new request, okay. this is done. So we have got the package and what we do is after, after creating the package, we'll add that into favorites. It's always good to have it in the favorites because we can get that values immediately. So I'll add that in the favorites and after that, I'll go ahead and uh, create a program in that. A simple basic program, which we had already done. okay this is saved now we'll go for this uh, favorite packages 
and go for new uh, new uh, ABAP package so we'll go for zba underscore 300 I'm sorry so we need to cl click on add package here add package so we have zv and it's got 300 we are selecting it in the favorites which you already know and we have added this in the package and we'll right click on this and create a program and click on program so zv and it's got p1 simple program click on next Now we are going to go ahead with the finish and this will be this is getting this, this is getting created here this and we've got this data here. So here we'll write some simple program which we already know. So we just have this cat fifteen even. We'll execute this. So I'll just write here with Malikya. And execute and I'll get this output. So this is a simple program. We're just doing it and we can we get all these kinds of windows here. We can just probably simply close that window so that we can go open it. Now now that we have created a program here, um, with a simple program basically, we'll go ahead with the CDS views. So we have created the CDS views yesterday, right? So we will we'll just cover up from the beginning. Uh, all the CDS views, I just want to, you know, recap. So data definition, and then I'll go for ZZB and it's called CDS1. And this is for data from, I'll do the data from KN1. KN1 is actually a SAP standard table. Uh, when you work in the real time, these tables will be available. KNA1, VBA, VBA, these all. Uh, 
this is a customer data click on next and we have got this uh, request say next and i am selecting this uh, view define view a simple view first i am selecting the simple view here and in the we'll click on the finish and i'm taking it from kna1 table and i'll go for this sql name is zba underscore kna1s kna1s and here i'll take this take this name of this uh, source as kna1 select from kna1 select from kna1 and here we can say just control space and you'll get the list of all the fields you can select any one Okay. You the moment you give the select uh, uh, KN1 table, automatically all this will come. Just a minute. KN, uh, I'll just go for that. KN and R. And then we have this. Uh, these are all the fields that we have. They are coming in the alphabetical order. So I'll go for uh, something like a uh, state. ANRED uh, ANRED and then we have this land one land one is the country right so we have this Okay, so uh, I'm going it with uh, these three fields. Okay. You can also go for name one. Name one is happens to be the name of the customer. Okay, so we'll go for syntax check. Syntax six is syntax check is good. So we have this activate. And once it's activated, we can execute this, and we can get the data from this uh, KN1 table. Okay, so we have got the data. The same thing can also be written as Define view zb underscore kna1 underscore cds1. Oh, otherwise, like what we'll do is we'll do it in another one, new one, because again it has already got created all the structure and everything, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, do it in a new one. So one cds view automatically got created, and remember if you observe here. The, since that CDS view got created, now the structure view also got created. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead with uh, another example in which core data services data definition only ZBE underscore CDS CDS two. Let's compare uh, that one and this one. So this this also also I want to do it in Okay, let me do with KNB1. KNB1. KNB1 is actually a, a, a table for bank details of customer, customer bank details. These tables which I'm using are real time tables. Means when you go into the project, you will make use of this for the real business environment. So these are the tables which will be there in the, in the standard software, which will be doing for the projects. 
SCRI desk flight tables all are only for practice for training purpose. They cannot be used in the real time. So I'm going at the view only. So click on finish. And uh, here, what we can do is, uh, this is also another way of writing it. I select KUNR name one ORT zero one. Land one, okay, and then from SCAN. This is another way of writing it from KNA one. And here we need to change the name of that SQL. So this SQL is ZBA underscore KNBK. Oh, I guess like. KNBK, right? Okay, if I, if I, okay, this is KNA1. I, what I wrote is KNA1. Let me change that to KNB1 because I wanted to do it from KNB1, right? KNB1. So from KNB1, we don't have this state fields. So we will we will have to rename that. KNA1 will be there. KNA1 will be there. VU Garris. ERD something like that. So we have come. So from K anyway. Now this is good. So we can just go ahead with this and we can activate. And next. So you get this data from the KNBK table. You can restrict the data now. So these are the two ways. Okay. If you observe this, there are slight changes here. There's a slight change here. The way we code it in the in this uh, KNA1, I mean like uh, in this select statement, define view as select from KNA1. We are giving the table name first. In the second one, we are giving the table name at the last. This is what we have. Fine. So this is what we have. Select from KNR BU Cas ERDT from KNB. Okay. Now this is what we have. Let me now go ahead with a few more advanced features for this. So now we wanted to add one more field. Uh, say something like ERDAT is there. For ERDAT, I uh, want to give that as date. Okay. Transaction date or something like that. So how do we write that as heading? at end end user end so automatically you will get that end user text dot label okay end user text dot label colon uh, we need to write what what is that we want to give the text it is uh, Transaction date. Okay, transaction date. Say okay. Activate. Then we have this as execute. And you will get this. And this is transaction date. Okay, so transaction date, okay. So what I wanted to show you is that I want to show you that one output. Oops. 
ERD three. Okay, so we'll have another way of doing it as well. So what we can do is we can also write the text. We can also write the text like this. Like So you will get this transaction date. Okay. The head, if you observe the heading, you have P R E A and D A T. So how did we get that? Is I have written this as uh, E R D A T as T R E A N date. So it is renaming that name uh, field as T R E A N date. So. And uh, we thought of uh, viewing the data, right? So viewing the code. So what we can do is we can right click on this. So SQL 38 statement. So if you see the SQL SQL 38 statement, this is how it looks like. This is actually the SQL statement. So if you see, this is automatically generated in the back end, and this is a different set of code. So the the code that we wrote on the front end uh, in the ABAP is actually converted into a pure SQL statement here, and this is what it looks like. This is what I want to show you. Then we have, for example, you want to just find out the dependency on which table is it dependent on. Okay, how do how are we getting the data? In what table uh, is it dependent on? So if you want to see that data, if you want to see that, you can just right click on this. Now it is very clear that it is there from KNB1. But if, if there is a complex program, then we can right click on this uh, KNB1 and uh, we'll go ahead with this dependency analyzer. Thank you. 
dos outros. Por exemplo, essa cidade. So when you get this output here, we'll get this something called SQL console. So if you see the SQL console again, here also we can see that code. This is the code that we have. So you can just write that. That means the raw data and the SQL console. And um, as I told you, we have to use the commas. And uh, if you are writing the select statement also, in select statement also, you have, you have to write the commas. And you have to uh, add that at the rate, which we already know. So we have used a left order join yesterday. We have used the left order join. Now we'll do the inner join as well. So we can replace that uh, um, left order join with inner join. So we can actually manually write that. So manually writing is something which is uh, you know a, a long process. What we can simply do is when we are creating itself, we can create it as a with with new data definition. Okay, zb underscore inner join sales. So we have this inner join. So if you select this within a join, automatically that code gets generated. But if we don't use that, you have to write it manually. Okay. So yesterday we have already done with uh, with this code. Automatically the code gets generated here. But now what I'll do is I'll go for define view, and then we'll go for finish just to show you that. Even a plain view also can be converted into that, but we have to write the entire logic. ZBA sales to here we write this as BBAK dot. And you'll get these details. Okay, from no, we write we write right here from BBAK. Sorry, this should be BBAK in a join BBAP on BBAK dot BBLN equal to BBAP dot BBLN. Inner join BBA BBAK BBAK inner join BBAP on BBAK dot BBA. Let's go to BBAP dot BBA. Yes. Now I'll go for BBAK dot B BBLN from BBAK dot ERPAT BBAK dot ERNAM BBAK dot er set okay so these are the bits and then comma vbap dot vsnr vbap dot matm these are the fields from vbap table okay now i think the zbasl tool is already there i'll go for this as zbasl 20 
actually because the reason it was giving an error i just gave this as 20 syntax check activate execute so you get this data here So now you get the data from both the tables. So basically, by default, if you select, you will not get inner join, you will get outer by left outer join, but still you can then change that according to this. Okay, so now I'll go ahead with another one with alias names. So we'll go for ZBA inner join S A L A alias names. tables and what we can do is now uh, we can go ahead with three tables also we can go for join for three tables also you can you can go for join for any number of tables okay so we'll go for uh, define view with join finish now automatically you'll get this default code wherein you just have to give the zbm is for this q l21 then here we'll go for data source name as something like VBAK as A left to join VBAP as B. Here we'll go for VBLN No, a dot vpln. We don't have to write vpk as again. A dot vpln. B dot vpln. We'll go for vpk vpk dot. No, you can write simply a dot. So everywhere we can write A and B instead of writing this A uh, VBA can be VBP. So we can just go ahead with that. Do the syntax check. Activate. So we get this data here. Got the data.
fine so here we have this is uh, this is a particular uh, series view in which we have uh, consumption so this uh, will slowly come to this one as well we discuss this option okay so from here we'll continue in the next session